good evening everybody so welcome to this uh, evening session of keynote by professor akul shivasnava of iit bombay so the uh, title of his talk is mapping the primary growth mechanism of vapor bubbles and heat transfer of nano coated surfaces of varying metabolism right so professor akul shivasnava is currently working as a professor in the department of mechanical engineering at iit bombay he has worked at various scientist positions at the Raja Ramana Center for Advanced Technology Indoor from 2005 to 2011. After that, he was a visiting professor at the Graduate School of Science, Sendai, Japan, uh, in the year 2011. He joined IIT Bombay in the year 2011. Okay, the focus of his research team is to measure 3D unsteady whole fluid field using advanced measurement techniques. Uh, that are completely inertia free and non intrusive. And some of these uh, presentations we heard earlier today in session number three in the afternoon, we taught, uh, I was the session chair for two of these presentations. So his research has shown significant advancement in the era of heat flux management systems, nanofluids, two phase heat transfer, coupled heat and mass transfer, drop rate interfaces, and bio heat transfer. He's also a Swarnajati fellow and he's an associate editor of one of the sister journals in Elsevier. So it's a pleasure to welcome Professor Atul Srivastava. Over to you, uh, Professor Srivastava. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Balaji. Uh, Professor Balaji, before I start, I mean, is my screen visible? Yes, your yes, screen visible, you're audible. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Right. So I will just close my video now. Okay. Sure. So many thanks, uh, Professor C. Balaji, for this introduction. And I would also like to uh, extend my sincere thanks to the conference organizers for providing me this opportunity to uh, to have a keynote lecture in this prestigious conference. Uh, uh, so uh, as uh, already introduced by Professor Balaji, I will be mainly talking about the primary growth mechanisms of vapor bubbles and heat transfer on nano coated surfaces of varying wettability. Uh, before I go ahead, let me uh, acknowledge uh, the sincere efforts that have been put up uh, by my PhD students, uh, Mr. Prasad Kangode. He is uh, he is currently in these almost in the final stages of his thesis submission, and uh, Dr. Surya Narayan he is currently uh, uh, pursuing his postdoc at Imperial College London, and Dr. Gulshan Sinha who is a postdoctoral fellow at uh, Kyung Hee University, Republic of Korea. So whatever material I am going to basically present today is a mix of the material that I have actually borrowed from them for this talk. So uh, their efforts are being kindly acknowledged. Uh, Yeah, so uh, this uh, 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 the today's uh, session is actually it is entitled as measurement techniques and miscellaneous. So uh, what I have uh, primarily done is uh, I will be emphasizing, I will be giving a, um, some emphasis on some of the advanced measurement techniques so that I am doing justice to the session in which this uh, keynote lecture is being uh, is, is scheduled. I'll be talking about some of the light-based uh, optical diagnostic techniques, uh, uh, particularly in the context of uh, two-phase flows, that is uh, nuclear boiling heat transfer. Uh, we, uh, I'll be restricting of all these three, three to four boiling regimes. Uh, my talk would be primarily restricted to nuclear boiling. We all are aware of uh, the importance of nuclear pool boiling phenomena or nuclear boiling phenomena in various areas of applications. Let us not go into that. This is the standard boiling curve uh, that we have all gone through in our, at least in our uh, undergraduate and postgraduate courses. But what actually adds to the complexity of this boiling phenomena is the, is the interaction or the mutual interaction of various sub-processes that occur at various length scales as well as the time scale. So when I talk about the micro I mean, length scales, you have micro scale convection processes like you have micro layer uh, heat transfer. And then this is also coupled intricately with uh, macro scale phenomena or ma macro scale sub processes like uh, your scavenging of the superheated layer or the quenching phenomena. This complexity gets further further uh, com uh, compounded by the fact that the substrate surface on which this boiling is, is, is uh, taking place, uh, that has an immense role to play uh, when it comes to the wettability of the surface. So this is going to be the primary or the, uh, the primary focus of today's talk. 
uh, we will be looking at the various uh, possible bubble growth mechanisms when the surface wettability is changed from hydrophilic to hydrophobic using some of these uh, advanced measurement techniques. Uh, just to emphasize this, uh, this point uh, regarding the complexity in, in, in boiling phenomena, in nucleate boiling phenomena, here is the schematic which shows um, uh, the representation of a growing vapor bubble. The various um, uh, modes of heat transfers that are associated with this phenomena have been pictorially indicated. This includes your natural convection, this includes your heat transfer taking place over the superheat layer that surrounds the vapor bubble, and then you have the evaporative flux as well. So through, our, through some of our initial works, we have been able to uh, partition these various modes of heat transfer, various sub-processes of heat transfer that that actually contribute towards the bubble growth and the effective dissipation of the high heat fluxes. Now, when it comes to bubble-based evaporation mechanism, there's a strong dependence on the surface wettability. If the surface is a bit hydrophilic, uh, people have reported microlayer evaporation, but as it, the wettability changes, uh, primarily the contact line evaporation comes into picture. Sometimes uh, microlayer as well as the contact line evaporation always, uh, I mean, also uh, exists simultaneously. So schematically showing this is the region of micro layer, which is uh, say few microns or few tens of microns in thickness followed by a macro region. This is the interface of the bulk uh, fluid with the micro, micro region. Now in one of uh, the recent works uh, by Mudawar, they have actually in their paper highlighted the need of new experiments and design specifically for validation of simulation models of boiling and uh, um, using some of the state of the arts uh, diagnostic tools. So we all are aware of or uh, the need for such advanced measurement techniques. So our group is actually uh, working towards this, uh, some of in, in the towards the development of such optical diagnostic techniques, which can which can image or which can quantify the processes that are taking place over various uh, uh, scales from micro scale to macro scale, and we need to have the spatial temporally resolved experimental data. Uh, experimental complexities are, uh, are are huge, which in turn make it high, make it a highly challenging uh, challenging job. So I'll just give you a brief glimpse of what have been the previous attempts on visualization. So this is the standard high-speed videography, which is primarily used. In fact, we had one plenary talk by Professor P.K. Das, uh, where he was talking about the evaporative flashing uh, phenomena being visualized using high-speed videography. One of the very strong tools, which, which, can, which can give you n number of parameters. But what cannot be deduced, it will, it will only give you the bubble dynamic parameters, that is your bubble uh, growth rates. You can track the interface of the bubble. You can de determine the departure diameter. You can determine the uh, bubble departure frequencies. But it cannot give you uh, any, any information about the transported properties, that is uh, temperature distribution or say the derived parameters like heat transfer rates. In order to circumvent this, some of the uh, some of uh, the uh, researchers have gone on to the use of laser interferometry. Now these are the standard interferograms, but here even if you are able to get uh, deduce the temperature distribution, but the appearance of this densely spaced fringes, they actually make it difficult to uh, to to uh, to accurately track the bubble interface. Okay, so it has its own limitations. And of course, the large uncertainties in quantifying the bubble dynamic parameters is always there. Now, bubble dynamic parameters and heat transfer rates are intricately linked to each other because it all depends on at what rate the phase change is, uh, is taking place and at what rate the bubble is departing and scavenging and all those things. So the experimental studies on simultaneous measurements on these two quantities uh, 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 of interest are highly scarce. So our focus has been on the development of advanced light-based uh, diagnostics for simultaneous mapping of bubble dynamic parameters and the associated thermal fields and heat transfer rates. Uh, compared to the conventional approach, approaches, uh, we sincerely feel that our approach is a definite advancement. So here are some, I mean, a couple of generous comments from one of the papers by one of the leading groups. So he acknowledges, the group acknowledges that the research group in India first attempted to utilize this RSD technique in the context of. So this is what I'm going to now talk about. So uh, how we are, uh, I mean, um, 
accounting for this simultaneous mapping of bubble dynamics and heat transfer, we are making use of the principle of rainbow shell and deflectometry. That is one of the refractive index based imaging technique. It basically uh, works on the principle of uh, refraction of light rays as they pass through a medium having uh, a spatial distribution or spatial changes in the uh, in the local local values of the refractive index. So initially, if there is no no thermal gradient, these uh, these light rays will get actually get focused in on the center band, which happens to be the red band, and you will get a, a uniform illumination of red intensity or hue, um, uh, red color without heating. That is in the absence of any thermal gradient. But as soon as you you uh, you impart some uh, thermal gradients. Uh, the change in the temperature would lead to the change in the in the refractive indices, which would lead to the uh, light. I mean, light rays getting refracted, and they will eventually fall onto some other color band, and you will get some sort of color contrast. So that is how you generate the color contrast. This is uh, one of the movies which shows the development of the or the initial growth of the boundary layer as you start heating the substrate, followed by uh, the uh, the inception of the vapor bubble. So, uh, so what it enables you is to you can you can accurately track the bubble dynamic parameters, the growth rate, the interfaces, as well as you can quantify these time lapsed images in terms of temperature distribution, whole field temperature distribution uh, in a complete uh, real time manner. So this is uh, simultaneous mapping of uh, uh, again the bubble dynamics and thermal field. You have pool boiling. And then we also have uh, in the flow boiling how the uh, this there's a channel with an upward flow your know, bubble incepts and then uh, after some time it departs from the surface because the uh, uh, bulk conditions are subcooled it eventually gets uh, gets uh, uh, gets condensed so these images can be recorded and they can be further quantified now that was the bulk uh, convection or the bulk parameters when it comes to bubble growth mechanisms you have micro layer. Uh, particularly in the context of hydrophilic surfaces. Uh, for that, what we have done, we have integrated a thin film interferometer. This yellow shaded uh, rectangular box shows the schematic of the thin film interferometer where we have used a 632.8 uh, helium neon laser. Um, the, the idea is uh, the, we have used the idea of classical interferometry. You have uh, two interfaces depending on uh, this path length or depending on the thickness of this, this liquid layer, uh, you will get uh, the formation of the fringe patterns that would lead to uh, the calculation of even the thickness of this micron scale, uh, uh, the, the thickness of the superheated layer or what we call as the micro layer thickness. And because this, this micro layer, when it evaporates, it actually feeds the growing vapor bubble uh, subsequently, the uh, the thickness of uh, this micro layer keeps deteriorating with time. Uh, but because you are doing it in real time, and that too, you can achieve uh, theoretically you can achieve resolutions of few hundreds of nanometers with this. So uh, it's a perfect one of the uh, commonly employed tools for for making such kind of measurements. So here is um, um, a one-on-one -on -one match of uh, a bubble that is growing. This is RSD, and then here you have from the bubble base. You can see the formation, reformation, and evaporation of the micro layer. Depending on the number of fringes that that appear or disappear, you can uh, calculate the rate at which the micro layer is being formed or the rate at which it is getting evaporated. We have extended similar kind of uh, uh, measurements in the context of flow boiling. Um, they, here, I mean, here the 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 bulk fluid is is. Uh, um, is it's it's a pool boiling, so you don't have much of the bulk fluid movement. But here it is a forced convection kind of upward flow. So even the micro layer, you can see the transients that the micro layer go, uh, goes through as it as it interacts with the bulk fluid. Uh, based on these um, sophisticated or some uh, reasonably accurate measurements, we have uh, we have classified the bubble growth formation mechanism or the process into three different. Uh, uh, regimes that is inertia control growth, transitional region, and diffusion control growth. And we have uh, in the third dimension we have shown how the actually this micro layer grows and evaporates, which in turn uh, feeds uh, keeps feeding the vapor bubble. 
Now coming on to this was some sort of introduction for the measurement techniques or the advanced measurement techniques like based. Now we are uh, having developed these techniques. We have now gone into um, developing some understanding of the surface wettability effects on bubble-based evaporation mechanisms. Uh, if we talk about the common approaches to modify surface wettability, people have um, actually uh, taken two, two broad routes, which are modifying the working fluid. Uh, they have made use of nanofluids or surfactant. And the second approach has been modifying the surface properties. That is either you modify the surface topography or surface chemistry, but whatever literature is available currently in, uh, available in the literature, I mean, the study is currently available in the literature, uh, we have not yet encountered many studies where, which have decoupled uh, the, the effects of these two uh, methodologies. So mainly people have used the methods which actually lead to the modification of the surface topography as well as surface chem chemistry. So uh, it becomes hard to comment on how one of these two uh, factors are, uh, is going to affect the bubble-based evaporation mechanism. So when it comes to nanofluids, uh, the central idea is that if you conduct a boiling experiment with nanofluids, uh, with evaporation, you will have the sedimentation or the deposition of the nanoparticles on the substrate surface, which would lead to the change in the wettability. So we have made use of uh, that approach when it comes to this uh, nanofluid-based pool boiling. But here, one of the limitations is that this nanoparticle deposition process itself is quite random. So it becomes really hard to control the surface properties. Uh, for that reason, uh, in order to have a direct comparison, we have gone for the controlled nano-coated surfaces, and we have performed the same experiments where uh, uh, the, the, one of the advancement is that we have only varied the surface topography and surface chemistry has been kept the same so that we, we are able to comment on the, the uh, individual effects of these parameters. So uh, now this is the effect of suspended nanoparticles. You can see these are the uh, rainbow Schlieren images or the, uh, the, or the uh, real time videos. Uh, this is water-based experiments. You can see a, a, a nice superheated layer, which this is nothing but this, this uh, hue distribution or the green color is nothing but the, the temperature gradients which are enveloping this, this growing vapor bubble because this is subcooled conditions. The bubble is not leaving. You can see the definite oscillations. But where it, when it comes to nanofluids, suspended nanoparticles actually tend to smear or diffuse these gradients. So we have reported these studies in some of these papers and we have quantified these images in order to get the whole field temperature distributions. Once you have the whole field temperature distributions, you can calculate the heat, I mean, the temperature gradients from there, the fluxes can be calculated. Now, leading, I mean, this deposition of the nanoparticles on uh, the substrate surface. Once we start from here, so if the surface is a bit hydrophobic in nature, this is we have used ITO coated sapphire, sapphire glass. Initially, the, the, the contact angle is nearly 90 degree or 85 degree. But what happens with due course of time, uh, the, the nanoparticles uh, keep depositing on the surface and what we observe that the, the wettability changes. So change in wettability due to nanoparticles deposition. Our interest is how does the growth mechanism change? Uh, what are the implications in the heat transfer mechanisms? So for that, uh, applying thin film interferometry uh, in such, uh, in such uh, experiments what was a bit challenging because these nanoparticles that get de deposited, they, they basically uh, interfere with, uh, with the light rays and uh, I mean, uh, accurately capturing the fringe phenomena becomes challenging. So what we have done, we have integrated IR thermography with rainbow Schlieren deflectometry for these experiments. The, this is the schematic. So here, whatever that yellow shaded box was there, thin film interferometer, we have replaced it by, a, uh, by an IR camera, which now sees uh, the radiation that are being emitted from the top uh, ITO coated heater. And from there, we are quantifying. Uh, so here are uh, this one on, match, one, one on one match between the Schlieren images, that is the RSD data, and the, uh, the fluxes or the temperature distributions as uh, derived uh, through IR thermography. You can clearly see that uh, you have uh, the bu bubble formation and correspondingly, uh, the, uh, you can see the transients in the temperature distribution. So this is the approach. And uh, again, uh, these are some of the parameters that I will not go into the details of the experiments. So here, when it comes to nanofluid boiling on hydrophobic surface, 
On the left column, you can see that this is water. The substrate is behaving as hydrophobic surface with respect to water. You can clearly see uh, contact angle nearly 85 or 90 degree. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, after some, uh, some time, this deposition of the nanoparticles changes the, the, the surface wettability, and here the contact angle reduces. So this gives more of, uh, more of a hydrophilic nature to the substrate. The thermal signatures are also uh, uh, quite evident. In the case of hydrophobic surface, you can see this, this ring. Uh, this is basically the, the temperature distribution. So you have low, relatively low temperature distribution al along the periphery of this ring. So that in turn indicates that the, the, the growth mechanism is primarily uh, majorly driven by contact line evaporation. Whereas on the, on, the, on the other side, this is more diffused or more smeared out. The temperatures are, uh, are more, it's, it's, the temperature distribution is more of a disc shape. And uh, we, depending on the bubble departure road time, you will see definite fluctuations in the, in, the, in the temperature distribution transients. Whereas on this, so more or less the steady, steady cooling. So this is a transition that uh, with, with respect to water, the surface was hydrophobic, but uh, with nanofluids, the, the wettability changes and the surface starts behaving from hydrophobic to hydrophilic. Definite uh, uh, differences in the bubble dynamics. In water case, we had vertically elongated bubble, which led to very slow growth of uh, the vapor bubble, negligible uh, waiting period. And uh, the steady cooling was relatively steady cooling was achieved. Whereas even though, I mean, the, the, the temperature drop was uh, not that much because of the contact line evaporation with nanofluid, because uh, the surface wettability gets changed to hydrophilic, it is more of a micro layer based evaporation. So you get significantly higher transients in the heat flux distribution. So this is uh, the same thing that uh, we have discussed. The, uh, with respect to water, you have, uh, initially you start with, uh, with uh, um, with hydrophobic surface. And what happens with water because uh, uh, it always leaves some sort of uh, vapor nucleus uh, once the bubble departs. You know, so you will always have this kind of contact line evaporation driven mechanism, whereas it is uh, more disc shaped distribution in the case of nanofluids, which, which eventually um, indicates towards the formation and evaporation of the micro layer. So for water, it is primarily the contact line evaporation, whereas for nanofluids and nanoparticle deposited surfaces, we, we observed contact line plus uh, micro layer evaporation. Then we, we compared our data with, uh, with the standard, with the classical bubble growth, growth rate model uh, proposed by Mickey et al. We saw that uh, now this uh, here, it should be noted that this model is applicable for bubbles exhibiting micro layer evaporation uh, driven growth. So if you see with water, uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, the, the behavior is, is completely different. But when it comes to the nanofluids based experiments, uh, this uh, equivalent radius with time uh, goes well with the, with the model that has been proposed by Mickey, which indicates that the micro, the, the, for these cases, the, the bubble growth mechanism is primarily the micro layer evaporation mechanism. So uh, uh, here, whatever uh, we had discussed, so we, we had primarily the heat, uh, high heat fluxes around the periphery. You can see these two peaks. Whereas in the case of nanofluids, you, it is more smeared out. You have, uh, you have more disc shaped uh, uh, distribution of the high heat fluxes, which eventually leads to uh, higher heat flux compared to pure contact line evaporation processes. Now, why this transition takes place? It is primarily because uh, uh, initially, uh, when you have um, uh, initially the bubble grows mainly exhibiting contact line evaporation mechanism, but in due course of time, as the particles nanoparticles get sedimented, they they form some sort of porous layer, which provides which leads to capillary assisted radial flow. So the surface keeps keeps getting replenished with, with supply of water and then you have all the working fluid which revets the surface. So in order to, uh, to uh, check uh, the, this capillarity, uh, capillary nature of uh, or the capillary driven flow, we, we took one of these surfaces and uh, just placed a, uh, placed a drop of water. You can clearly see uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the movement of this, uh, this contact line towards this. So that, that actually had uh, established that uh, the, uh, 
the nanoparticle deposition has act, has uh, led to the deposit. I mean, nanoparticles have uh, led to the uh, to the formation of a porous layer, which acts as a which assists in this capillary uh, driven flow and uh, leading to the formation of uh, the micro layer and re uh, resulting into relatively high heat fluxes. So this was with with respect to the uh, to the uh, random deposition of nanoparticles. So in order to give some control over over the phenomena, same, same phenomena. What we did, we we uh, same substrate was nano coated uh, with uh, two different techniques. Of course, we we uh, we uh, we conducted our nanofluids experiments with SiO2 nanoparticles. So the target material was kept the same, and 60 nanometer thickness was uh, was um, coated on the original sub, uh, substrate using two different techniques: ICP CVD, which gave us static contact angle initial 30 degree, whereas RF sputtering led to 65 degree. And these are surface one and surface two, whereas surface three is the is the base surface, which is the sapphire glass. These are some of the SEM of uh, surface one and surface two. So uh, we we conducted similar experiments and come, came up with uh, pool boiling cups. In natural convection regime, this NC denotes the natural convection regime for these three surfaces. The thermal performances of all the surfaces is almost well uh, is almost within uh, same within experimental uncertainty limits, which which is understandable. However, in low heat fluxes, lower wettability surfaces outperform the higher wettability surfaces. Uh, but uh, I mean, this is more evident in terms of uh, this overall heat transfer coefficient, where you can see that in in relatively high heat flux levels. Higher wettability surfaces, that is, this black symbols which reflect to 30 degree or surface one, the higher wettability surfaces outperform the lower wettability surfaces in efficiently transferring heat. And this shows good agreement with some of the classical uh, correlations. Now, in order to delve into some of the possible reasons, we looked at the bubble dynamic parameters. These are the bubble dynamic parameters. The departure diameter is uh, was found to be maximum for the case of 65 degree substrate two uh, the, for the bubbles, which were showing the micro layer evaporation characteristics, followed by 30 degree uh, high, highest wettability surface, that is surface one. So eventually, these three can be combined in order to give this evaporative flux. This is Fd cube into, into uh, NSD, that is a nucleation site density. You can uh, the uh, the highest level of heat fluxes were 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 observed for 30 degrees of uh, micro layer bubbles. That is surface one. That is the surface which had the highest wettability uh, characteristics. So these are the thermal signatures uh, along with the uh, rainbow Schlieren data uh, for surface one. Uh, this uh, the the uh, the evidence or the possible signatures of micro layer driven plus contact line can be seen because you have relatively thicker layer of this uh, outer peripheral ring, whereas when it comes to uh, slightly hydrophobic surface, you have this um, the thickness is uh, relatively low. That means it is purely contact line driven uh, evaporation mechanism. Here is a direct comparison when it comes from. Uh, when you, the surface wettability is on a is on a higher side, where your uh, apparent uh, sorry the static contact angle is lower, it traps the micro layer or the superheated layer, leading to the formation of micro layer and subsequent evaporation. With the passage of time, uh, the uh, apparent contact angle becomes greater than the static contact angle, which leads to uh, a good mix of or or majorly biased towards contact line evaporation driven bubble growth mechanisms. Uh, and then when we compared it with, with that of the previous set of experiments where we had used nanofluids and nanoparticles had deposited, here the, uh, the thermal signatures or the heat fluxes can be seen to be, uh, to be very high, uh, relatively higher, and that too spread over the, uh, over the entire core region. Uh, so, uh, but in this particular case, even though we are starting, uh, we started with micro layer or high surface wettability, the characteristics got changed and uh, complete evaporation of micro layer due to the absence of any capillary wicking flows. So here the capillary wicking flow uh, or the capillary flows that because of that porous nature of the nanoparticles that got deposited that uh, that always allowed that re-wetting of the surface which which actually which in turn led to the the, uh, the formation and subsequent evaporation of micro layer whereas uh, in the case of nano-coated surfaces, 
the uh, we had observed we didn't observe any any such signatures of capillary wicking flows which leads to this transition from micro layer to primarily the contact line so here are one on one uh, comparison of the two sets of experiments so we have taken surface 2 where the apparent uh, the initial static contact angle was 65 and nanoparticle deposited surfaces also had 60 degrees so the the wettability is almost comparable but in the case of surface 2 that is uh, uh, this uh, nano coated surface uh, the the growth rate of this dry spot was found to be significantly higher as compared to this uh, nanoparticles deposited surfaces the possible reason that we have proposed is that in the in the case of nanoparticle deposited surface we had this 9 microns thick around 9 micron thick deposited layer which which exhibited capillary wicking uh, and re-wetting or the reformation or continuous reformation of the micro layer and hence the rate at which the, 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 the dry spot grows is, is relatively uh, toned down or is, is a bit reduced. Whereas in the case of 60 nanometer thick, there was no such any, sign any possible signature of capillary wicking and hence which led to relatively uh, high growth rate or the rate, rate at which this dry spot diameter increases is significantly higher. So these are the thermal signatures. We can we have a direct comparison of these two. You can see that this is uh, nanofluid. Uh, the heat fluxes are more uh, more pronounced and more uh, spread over. Whereas in surface two, where it is uh, the capillary wicking effects were not not that prominent. It is primarily the contact line driven mechanism. So here are the concluding remarks. Uh, so we have. Uh, uh, this boiling heat transfer is a complex phenomena we all understand, uh, including various sub processes that interact from micro to macro scales. We need simultaneous mapping, mapping of these sub processes and that too using experimental techniques. Uh, we at IIT Bombay, we are working towards uh, developing some of these advanced measurement techniques, which will enable such simultaneous measurements. And uh, through this work, we have highlighted the salient differences in the bubble growth mechanisms that are associated with nanofluids vis-a-vis -vis nano coated surfaces, uncontrolled way of depositing nano, nano coating versus uh, controlled way of uh, achieving the nano coated surfaces and the possible influence of transition from contact line evaporation to micro layer evaporation on heat transfer rates has been quantified and discussed. With this, I will conclude and I would like to acknowledge Department of uh, Science and Technology, SCRB, Cummins and uh, faculty colleagues, and of course, the students and collaborators. Thank you very much. Very interesting talk, so a lot of fine measurements. So, are there any questions? Have you missed Hemant from the forum? Uh, no, sir. Uh, can, right. we, can we wait for two minutes whether it will... Uh, so, I will start the first question. So, so she was the uh, based on all these measurements. Can you tell us something which was very uh, counterintuitive or very surprising in all these investigations? There was some result which was not at all expected. What would that be? Yeah, so uh, these are some of the initial experiments, like uh, in some cases, like uh, where we have, uh, uh, where I had shown this uh, bubble departure diameter for uh, uh, for 65 degree they, where the bubbles were actually showing the micro layer uh, uh, evaporation mechanism there the bubble departure diameter was not found to be along i mean along the expected line so it was still on a on a lower side whereas uh, we had surface one which was higher metability surface there we got the bubble departure diameter to be significantly higher so those are some of the interesting things that uh, when you have uh, say 65 degree with nano coated surface uh, where the wettability changes uh, you have different bubbles that are exhibiting different i mean uh, bubble growth mechanisms why the bubbles that are actually showing the signatures of micro layer uh, evaporate formation and evaporation why they are not behaving um, exactly in the similar manner where we had the uh, a surface which had only which had uh, high wettability and which uh, which act only exhibited the micro layer growth uh, uh, i mean micro layer evaporation bubble growth mechanism so those are that is one aspect that we are currently looking into and we are in fact repeating the experiments the uh, some repeatability has been found out but at least with these uh, thermal signatures as recorded using ir and rsd we have been able to get some of the answers but yes of course uh, 
still uh, a lot of work needs to be done in that direction to get a better clarity. So what do you think is the highest increase in heat transfer coefficient once you put the nano put it surface in the boiling heat transfer coefficient? Yeah, so uh, that is uh, something that uh, I had, uh, let me just on that, uh, we, we have quantified that, of course, that uh, we have not yet, uh, I mean, because of the paucity of time, I could not uh, show that in this particular uh, uh, presentation, but uh, we, like in terms of heat fluxes with water, we, we got a maximum heat flux around the contact line somewhere around uh, 200 uh, kilowatt per square meter, whereas for nanofluids and nano coated surfaces, we got we went up to when when you have the micro layer evaporation mechanism, when the bubble growth mechanism is purely driven by this micro layer evaporation, we could achieve the heat fluxes of the order of 400 to 450 kilowatt per square meter. So those are some of the numbers that are definitely encouraging, uh, and a huge difference with respect to the base configuration. Very interesting. Hey, man, we didn't miss any question, right? No, sir, no. All right. So if there are no more questions, so thank you, Mr. Srivastava, for the nice talk and also it's a fag end of the day, but still yeah. a lot thank of energy you. and uh, some uh, high quality experimental work. So okay, keep the momentum going. Uh, the best you. of luck from the organizers. And, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good night. All yeah, right. Thanks a lot. Good night. Thank you. All right. So, Emmet, I will log off. Huh? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Professor Balaji. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Namaste.